So you're looking at the supply side, which is really a strong story that it's there's a lack of it. Um, and even though some of the new listings are sort of trying to bring that, bring that back into balance, when you start to think about the demand story, you, you're trying to get that, those nuances right. So let's just think about demand and, and we'll help educate you in terms of where you see downside risk. So you've got APRA. Obviously, at the moment, they're throttling that demand. You're obviously, are we seeing any foreclosure sales? Well, they're not quite around just yet. But if interest rates were to stay at this same high tightening level for 12 months or more, they are naturally going to increase off their record low levels at the moment as people just simply tap out um, in terms of, so they've been holding on, but if unemployment starts to slow down, or sorry, it starts to increase, or I should say employment starts to slow down and they just can't find that money to keep covering that property, eventually some of those properties will come to market. Is there a systemic risk in that um, that we see? No, there's not. So you can put a line through that in terms of foreclosures. We are starting to see a NAB a job anxiety survey also showing that there's, there's definitely an increase in terms of job security and that comes off the back of this slowing cycle. I mean, if you're in retail and no one's coming in your stores and, you know, you're going to naturally feel a little bit, well, no one's buying and if no one's buying, why they got me employed? So there's going to be, you know, going to be a correction in terms of the number of people working part-time and full-time in that sort of retail and consumer sector as well. Then you've got obviously household formation that Bryce was talking about before. When affordability gets really tight, we start to restructure our household formations and we start to look at, you know, how we can share in flat, you know, in flatmates and, and sort of start to look at ways in which we can reduce our costs in terms of whether we're renting um, or also potentially helping out family members um, if they're going through difficult periods as well. So that's playing into that affordability story, which is pu pushing us all into those affordable markets at the moment. Um, we are going to see slowing migration this year. So just a little context here. Last year, we had record levels of immigration. A lot of those were student university students. The Chinese government said, you've got to get back to Australia to complete your degrees. You can't finish them. Up. So that forced a lot of extra people into here. So we do know that through natural attrition and through that cycle coming through, that our immigration will probably get back to more normalised numbers around 180 to sort of that 250 range, which is a little bit more sustainable in terms of what that looks like. And then the last one we talked about is this government interference story. And that comes in whether it's, you know, changes to stage three tax cuts, but also negative gearing, capital gains tax discussions, the Greens getting on their bandwagon. That affects sentiment and confidence for a lot of people, especially if you're looking to invest. And so we just say to people, if you, if you have that sort of mindset, Get back to the decades thinking, stop, stop thinking in the short term in terms of what that story looks like. But they are they are the downside risk. And I know that there's a, a bigger number than the upside story we're talking about, but don't think just in the number of, of the different themes that are going through there. These next lot of upside stories um, can potentially out-trump all of those smaller variables that we just talked to. So the upside story...